A warm welcome to our today's webinar, Test and Measurement in Quantum Computing. In the following, myself, Philip and Stefan will introduce you to Rode and Schwarz and also show you how our vast RF technology expertise already brings quantum computers to life today. By means of case studies, we will show you along the process from the design to the final operation of the quantum computing system, how we can help you to make this happen. And we will round up the webinar with a Q&A session. But before we start, I would like to express my gratitude to the team of the Walter Meissner Institute with a special thank you to Professor Stefan Philipp, Dr. Frank Deppe and Malai Singh, who really helped us to make this happen. And without further ado, let's get started. Roden Schwarz can look back on a long tradition in RF technology. It has been founded as a two-man lab over 85 years ago by Mr. Rode and Mr. Schwarz. And from the beginning, we ensured to offer an ideal place for innovation, where employees can live our core values, impactful, entrepreneurial, and reliable. Still fully owned by the Rode and Schwarz founding families, we are independent of financial and capital markets, which enables us to be an enabler and innovator of a safer and connected world. But also to keep up with time, and reach out to new fields of technology. As a globally active test and measurement company, we are today active in many fields of applications. In the following, I would like to show you a few of them. Did you know that we offer industry-leading test and measurement solutions from, uh, for uh, electromagnetic compliance testing from debug to full compliance for more than 50 years? Or that our powerful mobile network and mobile device test solutions keep the backbone of mobile communication. We are also providing test and measurement solutions for designing, evaluating, and producing latest generation satellite systems and providing safety and security for avi aviation and aerospace. Our devices also help to develop, integrate, and produce high-performance automotive radar modules and systems. We started a couple of years ago also to address the challenges of electronic circuits, integrated boards, as well as power electronic designs with our test and measurement portfolio. All these fields of applications are also supported by our strong service team. What I also would like to emphasize is that Rodan Schwartz offers test and measurement solutions in time and frequency domain. And this is something only a few companies worldwide can offer to you. But how does a decades-long expertise in RF technology help in quantum computing? For this, we have to look into the concept of the so-called qubit, the basic unit of quantum information. A qubit is a quantum mechanical system which under some circumstances can be treated as having only two quantum levels or being in superposition of the state zero and one. Depending on the quantum computing platform, precise RF signals are required to control these quantum systems. Whereas the phase and the duration of the RF signals defines the state of the qubit. Typically, this is depicted by the so-called Bloch sphere. It illustrates the phase of the qubit as well as its probability of collapsing to a state zero or one. I already mentioned the term quantum computing platform, but what does that mean? So today scientists and also companies are working on the realization of the qubits by means of several different technologies. And in the following, I would like to give you a few examples. I would like to start with one of the most prominent ones is the, the so-called superconducting qubits. Here, the qubits are realized by means of so-called Josephson junctions which are nonlinear LC circuits and often also called as artificial atoms. A second very promising technology are the semiconductor spin qubits. Here the qubits are realized by means of quantum dots. Also, another interesting technology are the so-called ion traps, ion trap qubits. The qubits here are realized by means of ions trapped in an electromagnetic field. Last but not least, I would also like to mention the MV center qubits. MV means 
nitrogen vacancy. And this is realized by point defects in a diamond lattice. So the qubits are basically those point defects in the lattice. What we can say is that the control of those qubits for the technology on the left side are mainly done by RF technology. Whereas for the ion traps and the NVE center qubits, the control is done by means of coherent light in form of laser light. But it can also be done by the usage of RF technology. As of today, our strong expertise in RF technology and the performance of our devices contribute significantly to the advancement of quantum computing research. In the EU project OpenSuperQ, our TNM solutions support the aim of the researchers on designing, building, and operating a quantum computing system of up to 100 qubits and to make it available for external users. We are also proud that IQM, as a leading quantum computing hardware company and a key player in Europe's Vibrant quantum ecosystem relies on our solutions. In December 2021, the ETH Zurich researchers succeeded for the first time with superconducting circuits in quickly and continuously correcting errors in digital quantum systems, and our reliable measurement systems contributed to this success. This is considered to be a major step towards practical quantum computing. Last but not least, I would also like to mention the Walter Meissner Institute, where our test and measurement solutions help the researchers to pursue the goal of building and operating a quantum processor based on superconducting qubits. The Walter Meissner Institute is also a core member of the in 2021 established Munich Quantum Valley. In the following movie, scientists from the Walter Meissner Institute will explain where quantum computing will lead us to and how our precise and reliable tester measurement technology helps to make their dream come true. Enjoy! The quantum computer is a device that can solve for us problems that you cannot solve otherwise. And that's actually that's the promise that we have. The growth in quantum computing, to be really honest, has been driven by the fact that um, uh, some uh, engineers uh, previously figured out how to work with microwaves. We need the microwave test and measurement equipment to understand uh, whether everything performs as it should or not. The controllability of the system has to be perfect. So we have certain experience what instruments, what equipment we are trusting and we know actually that we can rely on the technology that is available. With Roden Schwartz, uh, what, what we have bought um, a lot of our uh, local oscillators. So these are really the instruments that would uh, generate the microwave signals, which we will shape and send down the fridge, both for controlling the qubit and reading out the qubit. We need instruments that just work at the end without thinking about scalable instruments, high precision instruments that can control our qubits. The specs of the top instruments are really top notch. It's not just turning a few knobs and having a little bit better sensitivity here or a little bit higher performance there. The foundations change. We have to co-develop instruments so that we can all move together into this direction and make this quantum computing possible. So with companies like Rode and Schwartz, we are actually confident that we can actually solve this problem because we get the support also from industry and that we get devices and instruments that are needed to get to this quantum computer that we actually envisage right now. The problems are hard, so you need to be better to solve them. And I think that's a very uh, strong incentive and a motivator to continuously improve yourself. The eagerness to get a working device, this is a spirit the engineers can and will bring to the quantum technology field. With this, I would like to hand over to my colleague, Philip Kurpiers. 
Philip received his PhD from the ATH Zurich in 2019 for the work on quantum networks with superconducting circuits. He will now introduce you to the technical aspects of applying our test and measurement solutions within a quantum computing system. Thank you, Christian. In the next section, let's have a closer look on the relevant steps on the way to build and operate a quantum computer. And let's see in more detail how high performance test and measurement equipment can support you on this way, as Stefan Philipp, Frank Deppe, and Marley Singh just pointed out during the movie. In the design phase, one typically starts developing the qubit design itself and also simulates the coupling of the qubits to other circuit elements for control and readout. Furthermore, one also develops test structures such, such as test resonators in 3D cavities um, to be able to characterize the qubit fabrication process and to test new materials. In addition, the package of the quantum processor is designed and more advanced qubit connectivity is investigated for example, using 3D integration techniques. All these developments are then validated in the testing phase using flexible test and measurement equipment and based on the measurement result, a feedback is provided for optimizing the designs. Another highly relevant step to operate a quantum computer is the design and integration of the quantum computing control and readout system. The whole functionality of the system needs to be carefully verified. This verification process starts with a test of a room temperature and microwave cabling and components and ends with checking the qubit pulse quality and the synchronization of the whole system. For these verifications, one requires reliable frequency and time domain test and measurement equipment. Having designed and validated the qubits and the control system, one can now start ramping up the quantum processor itself. For example, one can do first measurements of the qubit coherence times and then do initial calibration of the single and two qubit gates and, optimize and start optimizing the readout parameters. To then finally run complex quantum algorithms. Ideally, one uses highly integrated scalable systems since the operation of large-scale quantum computers requires tailored and automated solutions to be able to perform experiments efficiently. Exactly for this reason, we are very proud that we can welcome Zurich Instruments to the Rodian Schwarz family in July 2021. The combination of their high expertise and their tailored hard and software solutions for quantum computing control systems are an ideal addition to our existing test and measurement portfolio. Together with Zurich Instruments, we are now able to offer you best support from the design to the operating phase on your way to build a quantum computer. We as Lode and Schwarz provide on the one hand high-end general purpose test and measurement equipment such as our analyzers, as you can for example see here our network analyzers, our oscilloscopes and our spectrum analyzers as well as our power meters. With our analyzers, we help you to master your demanding measurement tasks easily due to excellent RF performance and great usability. We also offer a wide portfolio of signal generators, from high-performance ultra-low noise analog signal generators as the SMA100B to compact and scalable vector signal generators as the SGS100A. If your experiments require high microwave frequencies, we can offer frequency ranges of up to 72 GHz. Our test and measurement portfolio is complemented with our power supplies for biasing your devices, such as amplifiers or switches. Zurich Instruments, on the other hand, supports you with the most advanced quantum computing control electronics and software for operating up to hundreds of qubits. In their solutions, they combine highly integrated high-performance analyzers, arbitrary waveform generators and signal generators with their user-friendly control software to let you set up and finally automate your experiments easily and quickly. As Stefan Philip said in the video, so you don't need to think and worry about your control hardware, it just works. To find out more about the Zurich Instrument solutions, you can contact them directly, visit their webpage, or check out their webinars. For the rest of this webinar, we will now focus on the Lodi and Schwarz portfolio 
and show you how you can benefit from using our test and measurement equipment on your way to build a quantum computer. So let's start with the testing phase. As explained before, during the testing phase, you want to validate your designs and fabrication processes by measuring your test devices in dipstick type cryostats or dilution refrigerators. The validations are typically performed using spectroscopic measurements since they provide the relevant measurement feedback quickly and reliably. A Rodian Schwarz network analyzer is here the key instrument for all your spectroscopic measurements due to its short sweep times, its excellent noise performance, and a wide dynamic range. You can, for example, obtain feedback for your fabrication optimization by measuring resonant frequency and quality factors of your test resonators and qubits. You can also um, extract the coupling between circuit elements using multi-port spectroscopy, or you can test your quantum processor packages and your 3D integration techniques doing broadband sweeps to accept chips and package modes. This is a general overview on spectroscopic measurements. Let's have a closer look how we can use a Rodin Schwartz ZNA high performance network analyzers to perform resonator and qubit spectroscopy. As shown on the left, you use two ports of the ZNA to perform single tone resonator spectroscopy of your test device, which is cooled down in a dilution refrigerator. Doing a transmission measurement, you obtain the S parameters of your leader resonator, here shown with the frequency and in the complex plane. In addition, you could also parallelize your resonator measurements using the second internal source of the ZNA to measure more efficiently. Or you can make use of the second internal phase coherence source and connect it to your test device, as again shown on the left side for a superconducting transmon qubit. With this two-tone spectroscopy, you obtain the resonant frequency and the quality factor of the qubit, which can be directly mapped to its coherence time. We will later in this webinar show a case study of the spectroscopies which we performed at the Walter Meisner Institute. And with this, I would like to hand over to my colleague Stefan Weichselbaume. Stefan did his PhD work at the Walter Meisner Institute on coupling spin ensembles to superconducting circuits. After you have tested all of your individual microwave components and also optimized your fabrication process, the next step is now to integrate all of these individual parts into a single working system and of course to verify the correct operation of the system. And of course our test and measurement equipment can support you during this task of characterization and verification. So as we've heard in the introduction, Superconducting qubits are controlled by precisely timed sequences of microwave pulses, which are created by many different devices in your setup, like arbitrary waveform generators and signal generators. And the analysis of these complex IQ modulated signals with a large bandwidth are one of the prime examples where our oscilloscopes, network and spectrum analyzers can be used. With our devices, you can measure the signal quality and the waveform of your control and readout pulses. And of course, you can also um, ensure the correct synchronization between the different devices. And of course, you can do all of these measurements both in the time domain and in the frequency domain. Additionally, with our network analysis, you can characterize the noise and gain of your readout line. Of course, we also offer a comprehensive hands-on training with the experts of our R&S Technology Academy. So if you have any interest in this topic, please contact us after the webinar. An important first step is to optimize the readout fidelity of your experiment by characterizing the noise and the gain of the readout line. In a typical experiment with superconducting circuits, um, usually the microwave powers are really low and therefore several amplifiers are chained together to obtain a large gain and therefore a reasonable signal to noise ratio. And the first amplifier in this chain usually dictates the noise of the, of the whole readout line. And therefore nowadays a quantum limited parametric amplifier, for example a tuper is used that is mounted on the coldest stage of the ref uh, dilution refrigerator. And now, in order to characterize this whole amplifier chain, you can use our network analyzer as well as our spectrum analyzer. For example, 
by measuring the scattering parameters um, with the network analyzer, you can extract the exact gain of this readout line. By varying the microwave signal power, you can, for example, extract the 1 dB compression point, and by this, get a feeling for the nonlinearity of the amplifiers you use. And finally, if you want to characterize the noise performance of this amplifier chain, you can use a signal generator to apply a microwave signal with a known um, microwave power and use our FSW spectrum analyzer to extract, the, for example, the noise figure. But this measurement, of course, could also be carried out with a quantum analyzer by Zurich Instruments. Once you have characterized all of the microwave lines in your dilution refrigerator, the next step is now to really implement the quantum algorithm. So the quantum algorithm is usually depicted in this abstract form, as you can see here on the right, and a compiler from a quantum software toolkit is then used to translate this algorithm into concrete waveforms and pulse sequences. And these pulse sequences are then played by many different devices like arbitrary waveform generators and signal generators with a precise timing and uh, phase coherence. Therefore, it is not only critical that the waveforms are generated correctly, but also that the pulses are synchronized properly across many different devices. We demonstrate this verification of the temporal synchronization in a case study, which we have recorded in the laboratories of the Walter Meissner Institute. In the first part, we characterize this pulse sequence, which consists of a qubit control and readout pulse, which are generated by an arbitrary waveform generator and vector signal generators. We analyze the waveform shape using an RTO oscilloscope and then verify the correct timing between pulses using the FSW spectrum analyzer. In the second part of the case study, we show a simple two-tone spectroscopy, as Philip already mentioned previously. In this first case study, we show how you can analyze a simple pulse sequence. The pulses are generated with an HDAWG from Zurich Instruments and are upconverted with two SGS100A vector signal generators. On the RT06, we can verify that the pulse shape of the qubit control pulse indeed corresponds to a drag pulse with its typical double peak feature. The intermediate frequency signals are upconverted with signal sideband modulation and the resulting RF signal of both signal generators is then fed into the input of the FSW spectrum analyzer. In the frequency spectrum, we observe several peaks. The two large peaks correspond to the qubit control and readout pulse. The four smaller peaks are the other sideband as well as the LO leakage, where we see up to 40 dBc of suppression without any further calibration. The built-in IQ analyzer can be used to analyze the signal in the time domain with a bandwidth of up to 8.3 GHz. We can take a look at the signal magnitude as well as the real and imaginary part, where we can identify both the drag pulse and the rectangular readout pulse. The FSW also offers a pulse analysis software option. Here, we first set the center frequency to the frequency of the qubit control pulse and record a single trace with two repetitions. The software automatically detects all pulses and allows analysis of various parameters of the individual pulses, making it easy to verify phase coherence and timing of your pulse sequences. Let's move to the second case study, in which we will show you spectroscopic measurements to test your fabrication processes and designs. Here you can see the full spectrum of the readout line of a 5 superconducting qubit test sample, which I measure with our ZNA network analyzer. In the center, you can already identify the five readout resonators, which are connected in a notch type geometry to the readout line. Doing a zoom in around 6.5 GHz with a 1 GHz span, we can clearly observe the resonances. I use the multiple peak search function of the ZNA to quickly find all five resonant frequencies. For the further measurements, I will focus on the third reader resonator with a resonant frequency around 6 GHz. I zoom in to this reader resonator and you can nicely see the notch type resonance curve and the minimum marker which indicates the resonant frequency. Next, let's set up the two-tone qubit spectroscopy measurement. I turn on port 3 of the set in A to drive the 
qubit by using the leadout line. Then I fix the frequency of port 1 and 2 for the qubit state leadout to the resonant frequency of the leadout resonator. I start sweeping the frequency of the qubit drive source from 4 to 5 gigahertz with a moderate qubit drive power level to get the first qubit spectroscopy result. We observe a resonant feature at around 4.25 gigahertz. For a clearer qubit spectroscopy, I optimize the bandwidth, the number of averages and the frequency range to finally extract the quality factor of the qubit using the bandwidth tool of the Saturn A. We see some impressions from the lab, now back to Christian in the studio. In this webinar, we have shown you by means of case studies that we, Oden Schwartz and Zurich Instruments can provide you with flexible, efficient and tailored test and measurement solutions to build your quantum computer. Together with our application experts, we can support you along the way from the initial testing phase to the final operation of your quantum computing system. If you are interested in learning more about the system control solutions provided for the ramp up and operation phase, we strongly recommend the webinars of our colleagues from Zurich Instruments. And th with this, I would like to say thank you for your attention. And if you have further questions, feel free to contact your local Rode and & Schwarz and Zurich Instruments sales representative.